Hi everybody, Rose here. Easter Sunday afternoon and here we are. So I'm just going to wait for some friends to come on board and then we're going to begin. So I hope you're not all sleeping, that you're awake and ready for what God wants to say. Hi Linda, lovely that you online that's awesome and Shirley Momberg great praise the Lord this is good one by one you're coming on board and uh, Daryl great to see you Liz Sabrina Melinda wow lovely I see there's um uh yes hi Linda hi again I like that there's six of you at the moment and the numbers are climbing all the time and uh we won't be doing any worship this afternoon uh, when I was loading up the the um, morning recording, I had an advice notice from Facebook to say that I don't have permission to use the music that I'm using, and so that that part of the message will be muted. Now, some people say, yes, the music's muted. Other people said, no, they listen to the music, no problem. But I did acknowledge that they were welcome to mute the music. So I have to think of another way. I could possibly use my son, Joshua. Um, he's an awesome worship leader. Maybe I can get him to do some stuff for me, which I can preload. But we'll see how it goes. All I can tell you is it's really hot in this room today. The sun, even though it's a cold day, the sun is beating on all my windows. So if I look a little bit overheated, <laughs> it's just that it's quite hot in here. Hi, Auntie BT, lovely to see you online. It's awesome. Okay, we've got 16 people online now, and uh, I'm going to cover quite an a, a important subject this afternoon. I first want to say to you that I've really enjoyed building message over this Easter weekend or from for Passover it's so much nicer to build a theme and to add as the Holy Spirit shows you than to do a one-off message once a week and um, yeah I feel it's like just sprinkling confetti but when we can get online every day like this we can build and build and build and then there's just such a sense of uh, journeying with the Lord, which is great. So there we go. Yeah, 17 of you. Lovely. Hi, Gerda and Daryl. Uh, thanks, Daryl. He says the music is still up, even though I acknowledge that they weren't happy and said no problem. Just turned for some more light, yeah. And I said to them, no problem. They can mute the music. And so they didn't, so that's quite nice. Uh, we'll just see what God wants to do. Yeah, it has been great, Liz. It's uh, just given us an opportunity to build, which has been really wonderful. So on a personal note, I know that this is a new season for me, as long, along with many, many, uh, Pastor Greyberry, wonderful to see you, um, along with many, many other ministers of the gospel and ministries, this is our new season. It definitely is a season of going online and being on the internet and doing Zoom and video calls and all these different mediums. And it's going to do something amazing for the Church of Jesus. It's going to grow the church in a phenomenal, phenomenal way. And we're going to reach and touch people that we wouldn't normally and uh, because of God's grace. And so just know that, that this is your time and this is your season. I encourage you again, if you have any form of ministry or you're wanting to start um, a mentorship group or anything, it's not difficult. You just put it on your Facebook and press live. It gives you a few seconds. You can see yourself and see that you've got the right background and then uh, you go live. And there's only one way to do that and that's just to start talking. And the Holy Spirit will show you and lead you in what to say. So let's pray for this afternoon session. Father, I thank you for your amazing grace. I thank you, Father, for your hand that is upon us in this season. I thank you, Father, for the way that you are leading us, instructing us, and guiding us in this time, Lord. I thank you that this is the good day of the Lord, not 
a day of disaster and calamity, but a day of divine opportunity. Father, I thank you right now for your word that says that you are healing the brokenhearted and setting captives free. And so we thank you for that. Thank you for that, Father. Thank you that you are setting us free in Jesus' name. Amen. Sorry, I'm still fiddling around here, just trying to get this the way I want it. Uh, sorry, guys. Let's just see. Okay. Good. Maybe there's a bit more light. I don't know. From my side, it looks a bit dark. Is it okay on your side? Enough light? Anybody going to tell me, is there enough light on your screen? Can you see me uh, clearly? Thumbs up. Okay, great. Thank you, Jesus. Right. Okay, let's begin. So I want to talk a little bit today about the process of God. We looked at the call of God, and uh, I spoke a, a few things about uh, from the life of Joseph, and we spoke about the fact that sometimes you have to incubate the um, the gift and calling of God. You have to be um, know who to share it with and who not to share it with, and uh, and how Joseph went through the trials that he went through. He went through those places where he was thrown in the pit. Thank you very much, Gail. Where he was thrown in the pit and he was thrown in the prison. And eventually God did something amazing. We didn't get to the something amazing part. But isn't it wonderful that once Joseph had worked through those things that were coming against him. He uh, was in prison and the cupbearer and the baker uh, forgot him. But God remembered him. And then uh, when God remembered him, he uh, eventually becomes one of the head leaders in the country. And he stores up food to be able to supply others in the time of famine. So much so that he even fed his own family and they lay on each other's necks and wept through their reconciliation and their healing. And so uh, remember we spoke about the first, pers first level of betrayal came from his brothers. And they were the ones that threw him in the pit because they fell, found him to be high-minded, full of himself importance, bragging about his, his dream and his vision, and they didn't like that. And so they threw him in that pit. But then at the end of the, the process that he goes through, the life journey that he goes through, it's those very same brothers that he feeds and he looks after them. Uh, so I want you to know that when we were first called to ministry, Lionel and myself, um, I think our family weren't very sure. And I'm not talking about our children. I think our wider family, because we just started off with a big crusade and we were meeting in our home. And uh, there are a lot of people that think church is only a church if you have a building and a pulpit. And so I can imagine that um, these brothers, Joseph brothers, looked at him and thought, really, who are you? The word of God actually says that a prophet is not well received in his own hometown, uh, meaning that the people that know you will always see your weakness and not see the strength of God because they're not evaluating you by the spirit. They're evaluating you by the flesh and what they know of you. And I want you to know that the prophetic is about evalu is the word of the Lord in the spirit God is spirit and we worship him in spirit and truth and the prophetic word out of our mouth is God's word in our mouth and speaks about that that we are becoming. Prophecy is amazing for the formation of your ministry, your calling or your business, but you have to realize that um, it only shows the mountaintops. So a prophetic word will be, my son or my daughter, the Lord has shown me and the Lord says to you that you are going to be successful in this and what you put your hand to will prosper. And then I 
this will be the word I'm giving in other words. And then I see you writing manuals and you will be a prototype and lead many people into the same model. And uh, this will also take you to the nations, says the Lord. And so be of good courage. Do not shrink back. This is your day and this is your hour, says the Lord. And the person's like, yes, 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 this is so amazing. And they go home and remember what I said. First, you had this declaration. Um, yeah, the declaration of this amazing word. And then you go home. And the fanfare settles and you start getting into distress because nothing has changed and you're just same old, same old. And, uh, and you, we're, because prophecy shows you the, the pointers, but it doesn't always show you the journey. And so there is a place of despair and de desperation and disappointment as God will use your life to change you, rearrange you and bring you to a place as we said yesterday, that you're not a person with a promise, you become that promise that God has said. And so when we first started out in ministry, um, I was already being used in the prophetic and off we went and we started a church down the road in Ocean View near where we live. And um, this huge crusade and it was amazing fanfare and uh, people got, a man got out of a wheelchair and deaf ears open. Nothing to do with me or Lionel, to do with the evangelist that came that had this anointing on him for an evangelist and evangelist work, walk evangelists walk in signs and wonders and so he he was easily walking in this demonstration and when he, we finished a week of this crusade they handed it to us publicly and when we went back the following sunday there were seven people maybe nine people and five of them was our own family and so it's quite a shock and uh, and so you only really have a ministry when you're in it and God develops you in that ministry. You don't get handed the gift and calling on a platter, even though I said yesterday that God will first call you, then you record it, then you and you write it down, then God brings provision for the vision, and then God gives you an audience. And that's where I want to go today about this audience. And so we are not called to be pastors, apostles, prophets, evangelists, or teachers to the whole world. We are called to whatever audience God gives us. First, he calls you to 30-fold, then 60-fold, then 100-fold. There can be these levels of increase, but maybe not. Maybe he says you're a 30-fold minister. When I say minister, I'm speaking about, I'm not talking about ministry as in a formal position. I'm talking about that you are the administrator and administrate the administrations of the gifts of God. And so when I say if a minister, it's you that is the administration, administrator of the administrations of the gift of God. And so uh, maybe you are only called to the 30-fold. And we need to be rejoicing in the call that we've been called to and not try and get into somebody else's call. Uh, the Lord often speaks to me through two people in the prophetic, uh, when I'm prophesying over people, to say that in this next part of your journey, and if any of these prophecies fit you, please grab it for yourself. It's fine. If it quickens in your spirit and God's speaking to you, then you can grab it for yourself. And we often prophesy to people and say, this is a season that God's going to cause you to run in your own lane and that we see this um, running track, but each person's in their own lane. And the Lord would say, no longer are you a general, um, uh, what is that word? Um, I can't just come to the word, but no longer are you one of those that's going to be used generally for God in every department. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. No longer are you in that season, says the Lord. You've come into a season of specializing where God is going to use the gift and calling and grow that gift and calling so that you specialize in it. You will be known for the gift and calling that God has put upon your life. And therefore, you need to run in your own lane and not straddle other people people's ministries. And the example would be that if you start off training in a medical field and you start off being a, a, a training nurse, a staff nurse, 
uh, eventually a full nurse, then a sister, and then you decide, actually, I'm going to go back and study further. I want to be a doctor. Once you're a doctor, you want to be in a specialist field. You want to be a p do pediatrics, and so it goes. And the same it is um, moment by moment, level by level for that that you've been called to. The more you practice, and, when, and I don't mean it standing, although I used to stand in front of the mirror and prophesy, but... Um, the more you use your gift, the, 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 the more weight is going to come on that gift because you're making yourself available to God. It's not about uh, a lot of noise, you know, praying over and over and chanting in tongues. Those things are very important because tongues, speaking in the spirit, builds you up in your most holy faith. But all the time that you are faithfully being faithful with a little, God's going to give you more. God's going to give you much more. He says, if you'll be faithful with a little, I'll give you much. So yesterday we spoke also about, I felt the Lord say, prison doors are about to break open. Now, prison doors are not just people in Paulsmore or whatever prison you live near whether it's in this nation or another nation. It's not, only, it's not talking uh, specifically about prison ministry. When it says, uh, I will use you to break open prison doors and set the captives free, God is talking about the call on your life, the gifting on your life, being able to see people come to a place where they're able to be healed, let go, forgive, and come out of the place of isolation and uh, a stronghold that has been built around them that has caused them to be less than what God has called them to be. And so when God says he's going to use us, the body of Christ, to see prison doors open, I believe that our nation is uh, is coming back to God right now. Just look at Pretoria. They have these huge um, loudspeakers and they are playing that uh, show for sound that is recorded on the internet that we also play uh, at 7 in the evening or 8 in the evening. They are playing that three times a day. It can be heard for miles through the area of Gauteng and the surrounding areas. What does that speak of? That is a demonstration that the nations have come to the end of themselves and they are coming back to God. Revival isn't on its way. Revival is here. It starts in each of us being revived. And God is giving us, the church, the kingdom of God, a message that is going to break open prison doors. I hope you believe it because you are going to be one of those that brings a jailbreak in the lives of those that have been shut up and confined in the personality, their calling, and the vision of God, because there's been nobody, the, the, it says in the word, word, is there no healing balm in Gilead? Guess how sickness flourishes. Sickness flourishes through worry and anxiety. It depletes your immune system. And if the devil can keep you believing that sickness is what is used to perfect you, you will remain in that place. No, God does not use sickness to perfect you. He uses life, but he does not use sickness. He's not the author of sickness. And so God has given you the ability to come alongside people that need their prison doors open. Let's think of some of the things that we need to break out of. Uh, in all my years of ministry, and that's about 35 years officially and maybe four years before that, so nearly 40 years of ministry, I want to say that I have come across many different conditions. My husband used to say the dis-ease on the people, not the disease. We are If you are not running at optimal healing inside and out, then there is a, a dis-ease. You're not at ease. There's a dis-ease which results in disease and doesn't allow you to grow. It's like being a plant in a little pot plant because, number one, we don't believe in ourselves. Number two, we have people around us that don't believe in us, and that's what happened to Joseph. But that's going to stop today. Today, because we're stepping into a new season, we're already in the new season, the doors just aren't open yet, but spiritually, we have stepped into this new season, this new decade, and uh, God is doing an inner work. Remember, I said, first he shuts the door. 
Before he sets you out, he shuts the door and he does something deep inside of you. He equips you and in that place of intimacy and you get revelation for the vision and then off you go. So what are we called to do? We are called to invade our territory and occupy it and establish it. You know, David in uh, the book of Samuel, David said to the Lord, look at this, look at my enemy, God. What do you want me to do? David never went to war every occasion. He would go to the Lord first and say, this one, must I go and fight this battle and will I win? And the Lord would say, yes, fight the battle. Then he would go and he would come back with the spoils. Other times he, the Lord would say, no, they will kill him themselves. Just leave them alone. And so on this occasion that I'm thinking of, he said to the Lord, look at this enemy. Do you want me to go up? And the Lord said, yes, go up, pursue them, overtake them and recover all. I believe that we are in that season now when God is saying, go up, pursue this thing subdue the things that need to be subdued and recover all. So the places of disappointment and delay and uh, I have to add this even, competition, building our own, um, our own um, power, power, um, um, our own power-based ministries, having the video of the month and the this of the month and the that of the month finished. Father brought the leveling field. He said, you're all my children in the kingdom. The Eastal order, don't get me wrong, because of fivefold ministry, but fivefold ministry is there to train you to do the work of the ministry, not to just hold it to ourselves. So, so, so what are these things that we need to be getting healing? Well, one, at one stage, my husband and I uh, were in the UK and there was a room full of ministers and some were apostles and prophets and and some were moving in deliverance ministry and they were doing uh, ministry for one another and we were praying over everybody and I was prophesying obviously over these different ministries represented and there was one particular person that I couldn't find a prophetic word for and I felt really bad because it didn't matter how much I was waiting in the spirit, nothing. And so at the end of this lovely time, a couple of hours we went off and uh, the next day my husband and I went down to London, five hours away from where we were staying. And we were walking around in London. We were going to stay there for a couple of nights. And lo and behold, here came this man and his wife that I didn't have a word for. But as I saw them, now what, this can only be a God incident. What are the chances in the middle of Piccadilly Circus in London to bump into anybody that you actually know? And you don't even live in the nation. And neither did this couple. They came from another nation as well, not, but not from, from the UK and not from South Africa. And I turned around and our eyes locked. And they were so excited to see us. And they said, let's have a coffee. And I said, yes, I have a word for you. Because as I looked at him, the Lord gave me a word. And we sat down and he ordered the coffee. And I said to him, this is the word of the Lord. First the man, then the marriage, and then the ministry. I said, God is going to do a deep work in your manhood and in your marriage and then in your ministry. And I said, God will complete what he has begun and he'll fulfill what he has promised. And your time of frustration will be over as you embrace this first the man then the marriage then the ministry well we walked away big hugs very excited but you know when it speaks about first the i'll say first the minister i won't say man because it'll be male or female first the minister then the marriage and then the ministry there are things in our lives that hinder us from being courageous and demonstrate the supernatural because our person broken personalities and our soul realms get in the way and so unfortunately, that man didn't really work with the word that God gave him and ended up out of the ministry through uh, infidelity and a lot of things went wrong and they lost their ministry. And so, but God never gives a word to destroy us. He gives us a word so that we can work with it and get the right counsel so that we can come into the right place. We have many blind spots in our lives that we don't see and others will see, but always find yourself trusted advisors in this season 
season, this new season, God is changing the players. He's going to give you spiritual moms and dads, apostolic mothers and fathers uh, that are able to take you from the season that you're in because you feel like you've reached the ceiling of your season. And Father says, I will give you the right players around you to, to bring you into the season that is um, time loaded for you for now because it is time. And they will also be able to keep you in a wide open space that I am preparing for you. And so in times of traveling and ministering to people, I've come across many, many, many uh, different situations that I've needed to counsel people. One of them has been with young girls that are bulimic and anorexic, and you'll always find the root behind it has been sexual abuse and how you need to work with that and heal those places and close those doors that were open where it says do not awaken love before the appointed time and you have to work through that and what you see on people in the natural is not the root of what's happening in the spiritual but the father says that if you lack wisdom ask me and i will give you wisdom liberally i've seen people that are totally far away from God or in a very bad situation being endorsed by, by leaders that had no right to endorse them and they have caused a lot of problems in the body of Christ. Um, I'm trying to think who it was, one of these very powerful speakers, they, the, 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 the Bible scholars still refer to their messages but I just can't think of his name right now and he said when any man, young man came and said to him that he feels a call to go into full-time ministry that he would go into his room and weep because it's not an easy call it's not an easy call and we're living in an age where everything is just love and don't it doesn't matter we're in a place of grace no God can only use vessels that are clean and not just an outward clean, an inward clean. That we keep a short account with God. If you want to come into the higher portion and you want to come into the supernatural, you have to lay down those things that have broken you and hurt you. You have to ask the Lord to heal those places from the inside out. One day the Lord said to me, no, I said to the Lord, sorry, Father, I never even spent time with you. I'd gone away for two nights for a break. This is now just um, not so long ago. And, uh, I, and I said, I'm sorry, I never spent time with you. And then I said to the Lord in all honesty, because he's my friend, I said, I don't really want to speak to you. I said, because I trust you for other people, but I don't know if I trust you for myself. Like my trust in God had taken a knock when my husband passed away. And not that I, I knew that the whole of heaven came to fetch him, but my soul realm was bruised and damaged. And then I just burst into tears, just me and him in, the, in this little room as I was packing my case to come home. And all he said to me, he never rebuked me, he never gave me reasons. All he said to me is, will you trust me, Rose? Will you trust me? I said, I trust you with my very life, God. And so if we are going to be used of God, there is not. we don't want to be in the middle of running with God, put our hands on somebody. And as you're laying your hands on somebody, the devil comes and says, do you remember that thing from your childhood? Yes, it's forgiven absolutely forgiven but it's still damaged you and you need to go and ask God to heal it remember when we spoke about shepherds that shepherds take the anointing oil or the ointment and they rub it in beyond the the um wool right to the skin have you I mean we had sheep here on our property which we don't have anymore but when you you have to go very deep to get to the flesh of that sheep especially if it's a fat-tailed merino uh, it takes a while to get in there. And so Father is saying, I am the God not only of, uh, of the everyday occurrence, I'm the God that heals the deep places in your life, the deep places in your life. You will know if there's still places that need healing because you'll either respond in a bad situation or you'll react. And if you react, it means we're touching on something that is ana, something that needs healing. And so he says, I am the God that healeth thee. You see, this message is not a message of bad news. This is a message of good news. That he's allowed us to be shut away so that he can do these deep things in our lives so that we can burst out 
into that place where we are fully used of God because there's no space, uh, no shadow of turning. My husband's gone to the Lord 17 months already. And I was saying to my children the other day, I said, isn't it funny, whenever I dream about him, I'm arguing about either his laptop, why can't I use his laptop, or something ridiculous. And we had a laugh about it. And last night, because it was quite a cold night, the blankets were all twisted up on the side of me. And in a dream, I, I, because of the closeness of those blankets, I thought that Lionel was with me. And I put my hand out to put my hand on him. And when I realized, but he's not here anymore, in my dream, I had a smile. I was smiling, thinking, how precious is that? And so when you start turning that corner of healing and you start having that kind of uh, experience, you ne- then I know that the places inside of me that needed desperate healing, that the process is on, I- I'm on track. I'm on track with my healing. You can meet somebody that husband or family member died 40 years ago and they say, I'm so upset and I'm so disappointed. And I say, when did your husband pass away? Oh, 35 years ago. We have to come to God because the Holy Spirit is a comforter and he comforts those who mourn. There's another mourning that happens and we're not about losing somebody to death, losing your ministry. Maybe you started a ministry and it failed and you have shame on you because you don't want to come back into ministry because they nearly killed you. (laughs) Those people, Lord, they nearly killed me. And it's a little... It's a little phrase. It's called premature departure. Maybe you were made redundant. Premature departure. It wasn't in the plan. You didn't see it coming. And you feel like your legs were cut off underneath you. You remember the very day. You remember what you were wearing. You remember exactly what they said. And it's time to say, I forgive you. I forgive you for this. I forgive you for that. I forgive you for that. Because when you forgive, it doesn't let the person off the hook, but it opens the prison door. It opens the prison door. So on this wonderful uh, Passover, Easter Sunday, tomorrow will be Easter Monday or Family Day, I want to ask you to write a letter out of this message that I've ministered this afternoon. Remember, all of what I'm ministering about is preparation for the, for the fullness of the season that we've entered into. Write a letter to the person that you're never going to give them. Write a letter to that man or that woman that abused you. Don't think that abuse is only man to woman. I've counseled many men that have had the ear, uh, a broken eardrum from a wife hitting him with a squeegee. You think, when I tell that story, people laugh. And so men hide their secrets because they don't want to look a fool. But the, it's the same whether it's male or female. And write that letter to that person. Say, you stole my childhood through sexual abuse, etc., etc. Just pour your heart out on that. And say at the bottom of the letter, I choose to forgive you. I choose to let it go. I take back what was mine. No longer will you have authority over me. And when you finish that letter, burn it, burn it, burn it, burn it. Let it come under the fire of God and watch and see as your prison doors open. You will come into a level of worship in singing and a worship in intimacy with God uh, that you've never had before. And you're going to walk into this new season with such a freedom and go, I have no enemies. I have no enemies. I've let my enemies go. You wonder why that person hasn't come to salvation? Because you've got them captive in unforgiveness. It works two ways. It works two ways. And so David went up. He pursued the enemy. He overtook the enemy. So once you've forgiven and got those places healed on the inside, not all of it's going to be in a day. God will remind you as you're going and growing. Um, He pursued, he overtook the enemy, and he recovered all. He recovered all. And so I want to say over you today, you're going to recover. You're going to recover 
from those things that you've said, I will never have a best friend again. I will never ever marry again. I will never be in ministry again. I will never join a church again. Remember this morning we spoke about what we believe. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that he died for me. And tonight, today it is that we're going to cancel the word never and always. You never came to my aid. You never ever come to my aid. You always respond like this. And instead we're going to say, Lord, change me. We're not going to be victims and blame others. We're going to say, Lord, change me. Teach me to trust you, O oh Lord. Teach me to trust you. I give you, and I've got one here. Let me just find it. I go, I give you my new canvas today, Father. There's nothing on this canvas yet. I'm ready to paint. <laughs> and you say, here's my new canvas, Lord. Mix a color, a color that I've never seen before. Bring me into my call and my destiny because you're a good, good father. And you watch over the affairs of your household. And as we've been faithful with a little, I'll make you faithful with much. And there's one thing I want to close with this. Never, ever feel inadequate um, in your theology. A lot of people are scared to witness, scared to preach, scared to teach, scared to speak. Because what if they say the wrong thing? Share your stories. Share what God has done in your real life situation. It's powerful. It's powerful. God is not looking for perfect scholars. He's looking for lay down lovers. Those that will trust him and those that will walk with wide eyed wonder. We are called to invade the territory that God gives us, to occupy the territory and to establish the ways of God amongst God's people. I trust that this teaching has blessed you today. Um, it will go up onto YouTube. You're very welcome to send it out to friends. Maybe you know somebody that is battling right now and needing uh, healing on the inside. That's right, Debbie Minter says, inner healing, that's right. Father says, I'm not changing your personality. Nick Breakspear, wonderful to see you online, my brother. God says, I'm not changing your personality. The Lord says to you today, my sons and my daughters, I'm not here to change your personality. I love the way you are. I love who you are. I love that you bring fun to the party. I love that you're present in your circumstances. Yes, I've come to, I've come to change you from the inside out. I've come to heal you, says the Father. When you understand who I am, then suddenly you will understand who you are. And no longer will you be cowering in the back row like um like a school child that is scared that the teacher will pick on him but you will be the first one in the front line saying where's the fight let's go let's do this let's let's take the land let's overcome let's pursue father says you do not know what you are capable of until you step onto the running track and yes says the lord i am giving you each your own lane no longer are you going to feel that you are in competition with anybody else for have i not brought down the ivory towers and those that have set themselves up in a pyramid scheme uh, that, that that it's me and them and then the whole of the body just flat lines on the bottom of that pyramid no says the lord i value you i have my hand upon you I have my eye upon you i'm lifting your gift and calling out like never before gail i saw you on your gail and Gail Coyne, the Lord says, I want you to know, my daughter, that the gift and calling inside of you of being an advised counselor is going to get such a breath of fresh air on it. You're going to be a prophetic counselor. Not, I'm not saying you're going to prophesy over people, but you're going to hear the Lord and speak the wisdom of the Lord without thinking about the textbook or thinking about how it all fits together. You're going to find yourself counseling people in a total different manner. And Father says, it's going to be 
be fast track, fast track. You know, when you go to the airport and then there's a little sign that says for those that need to fast track. And it's like a, a season of favor when they walk to this fast track lane and get onto the plane before anybody else because they have got the gold card maybe. And Father says, my daughter, I've given you a gold card that you'll be able to fast track my people out of the places of hurt and brokenness and they will come into a new dimension says the lord uh, i'm not too sure if the the prophecies that i'm giving will come up again yes of course they will they'll be recorded so that's good you're all just so amazing Oh, Donovan Jacobs is watching. Donovan, the Lord says to you, your best years are ahead of you. He says, forget about the past. He says, the new has come. And he says, stretch into the future. He says, you've kept yourself on a low level too long. He says, now is the time of promotion, my son. Time of promotion for you, Donovan Jacobs. Yes. Yes. Yes, oh my word, Gail, that's it. God's going to call you the fast track counselor. <laughs> it's awesome, isn't it? Okay. Okay, let's do some Holy Spirit praying over these places that maybe the Holy Spirit has touched in your life today. So, Father, we bow our heads and our hearts towards you this afternoon. For those places in our lives that have been bruised and broken. Those places even when we were young, little boys and girls. And things went wrong. And we walk in shame and we hide things because we don't really want anybody to know. And the Lord says to say to you this afternoon that there are no levels of sin. That he doesn't put the sin on a scale and say, I'll only die for this, but I'm not dying for that. Father says all sin gets forgiven at the cross of Calvary. And Father says today, I'm taking the yoke of shame off your life, those places that you hope nobody ever finds out about. Father says, I will remove the shame. I will remove the torment. I will remove the pain of it. I will heal you from the inside out, that the enemy will no longer be able to put that yoke on you at the most unopportune time, but you'll be able to say, that is my past, it's forgiven. Father says, I'm putting up as no fishing sign that it will never be able to be remembered no more. Father says, even if you try and go back to it in your memory bank, it's going to become dim, dim, dim. And so, Father, thank you for that. Father, I want to pray for those that are premature departure. Those those that one minute were working, the next minute they don't have a job. Those that had ministry and no longer in ministry. And the disappointment and the hurt and the shame and the crushing that they have gone through. That there was no warning, that they felt like they were going down a slippery slide. And Father says to you, my son, my daughter, I was with you when this happened. I saw every tear. I heard the cries of your heart as you lay on your bed at night. And he says, today I come to heal those places. The place of rejection the place of failure he says i pull out that root of rejection this day and no more no more will you battle with this thing says the father father says for those that have had addictions and not even necessarily only talking about drugs alcohol or sex these are three heavy addictions pornography i'm not even talking about that uh, i am but that's not all i'm talking about i'm talking about the lady or the man that has to have panada every four hours that on drugs that are not prescription drugs, over-the-counter medicine, cough mixtures, um, obsessive compulsive relationships, um, anything uh, that for causes a uh, uh, rules your life, causes you to look for it again and again and again. And Father says, I will help you. I will deliver you. And he says addiction is not because, uh, now it is because your body needs it, but it is a root. And he says, as a child, I feel, I don't know who this is for, but I, I see this child standing as a little child. And they felt marginalized, overlooked, always felt like they got the raw end of the stick. And because there was a gaping hole in your life that you didn't feel loved by your father in particular, 
they will become an addiction, an addiction uh, of performance that you have to perform, that you have to be forever on the front foot, that, you, that you're a joker, that you will make jokes to cover your insecurity. And God says, I want you to know, my, my um, child, that I saw you as that little toddler and I was with you. And he says, today I heal those places where you felt abandonment. He says, I pull out the roots of abandonment. And I'm healing you in those deep places. And abandonment will no, not drive you to the places of approval any longer. I love you the way you are. And people love you for who you are and for whose you are. So I thank you, Father, that you've highlighted these few things this day. And I pray, Father, as each one writes that letter and forgives their enemies, that we're going to step into a new season with great joy. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You know, every time I come onto the live, I don't know what I'm going to say. I'm just dependent on the Holy Spirit. But I do know that we've heard him today. And this was the word of the Lord. So have a wonderful afternoon. Tomorrow is uh, Monday. And um, I had said to my family that I probably won't do a live tomorrow. But can I get back to you? Okay, have an awesome day. Thank you for each and every one that came online. Love you very much. And God bless you. Have a lovely afternoon.